Hey everybody. So just to round things out in our videos with Pixies, we've done a video on Pixie Studio. We've done a video on Pixie Scenario Processor. Uh, the last of the, the three main pieces that I typically use will be diving into Pixies plugin. Um, so 15 second recap on plugin. Pixies plugin is a plugin that works inside of Unity. It's going to be from a UI dropdown that gives you a lot of the Pixie Studio capabilities, just in more of a light version, if you will. Um, so it gives you really good import features that allows you to pull in that CAD data directly into Unity without needing anything third party, just the plugin. Uh, and then once that data is inside of Unity, it gives you some really good tools to make uh, custom changes to uh, decimating the mesh to pivot points, among many other things. So let's dive in. All right, so the first thing that we're going to cover is just how to install Pixies plugin. Looking over at the website here, um, I'll put this in my description. I just got here by Googling Pixies plugin setup. It takes you through a few of the steps here. So install Pixies plugin for Unity. This indicates that you can install Pixies plugin from this com.unity.pixies.plugin for Unity package. It used to be this wildly complicated process where you had to download three different tarballs individually and then install them in the correct order and then go into the license server and uh, log in, authenticate that you have a license and then it would start working. So the Pixies team has done a spectacular job in streamlining this. So let's just follow along directly. I have a uh, Unity LTS 22 up in the background here. So right here from the Unity package manager, you can install from this package name. So I'm going to highlight that control C to copy, come over here and inside of Unity, go to window, Pacman, and inside of the package manager that pops up, we're going to add package by name. I'm going to control V and hit add. And let's let this process for a second. So again, this is doing a lot in the background that used to be a very manual process. Super happy with this. Um, but ideally when this finishes, it will have everything configured how we need it. You'll see a Pixies UI uh, indicator button app at the top. And once you have that, you know that Pixies is on your system, then we're going to go in and actually do the logging in. So I'll speed up this next part if it takes too long, but it looks like we're about to be right through the install of this package, which is pretty awesome. Okay, spectacular. So we are done. It is now in the project. So you can always tell which packages you have in your project by looking at packages, make sure that it's selected as in project. So you're only looking at what is in your project. And then I can come down here and see immediately that it has what I need for Pixies installed. So for Pixies, the other way, as I mentioned, is just look up here and now we're going to see the word Pixies up at the top. So let me click on that. And then we are going to go to license manager and click on that. And now this is going to show my current license. I'll just black out the uh, host server and server port so that I'm not showing too much info on this video. But the idea is this shows you your current license. If you're working online, that means that you're going to log in with your Pixies username and password. As a brief reminder, Pixies, as of today at least, is a separate login and a separate dashboard to manage your licenses than Unity. So your Unity ID org has little to nothing to do with your Pixies ID. Uh, right now it's a little bit more manually intensive, frankly. I know that it's in the works for it to be less so, uh, but the idea is if you have 10 people on your team that have a Pixies plugin, uh, let's say it comes with their industry license as an industry customer, each of them uh, will either be getting their own login with their own password and each of them in their dashboard will have one license to manage or to log into, um, or they would all funnel to the manager that procured the licenses and then that manager would just need to dole out the username appropriately to the correct computers or to the correct users. If it's offline, there's another 
whole process we can go through if anyone needs me to do a walkthrough of it. But the idea is that you would create an activation code request on the offline computer, go to an online computer, go to the Pixies dashboard, which I believe is just Pixies software, um, just to verify in here when you come up to my account um, or log in, it'll give you all of these items. When you go to license management, you'll be able to see uh, what licenses you have. So anyways, if you do generate the offline code, you'll go into your licenses and then you'll request the activation offline code to essentially upload whatever you generate here to then download and install the license offline. Lastly, if you have a license server, which is what I'm on, uh, again, I'll have to black out the address and port for now. Um, but the idea is that you have an address and a port that you are connected to and that your company's IT uh, LAN system or intranet has a flex LM server that's running the process of Pixies. So um, those are the different ways to get your license up and running. Once the license is up and running, we can go into Pixies and into import model. And I'm just going to do one that we all know and love of the radial engine step file. Once I hit open here, you can see there's a variety of uh, items that I can customize here. So let's just walk through them really quickly. So this is a preset. I'll walk through how you can make different presets here. Um, but this is the default import settings that it's going to pull in. Then you have import metadata, import patch boundaries, import lines or import points. Uh, typically metadata is all that I'm going to want to pull through. If I have CAD data, I don't really want points from a point cloud right now. I don't really want the lines coming through. For the scale, it's automatically going to set the scale to what it believes is correct here. It's going to orient automatically. Uh, if I had patches coming in, it would stitch them if I told it to. Um, how much of the hierarchy do I want? Do I want the hierarchy to automatically merge uh, by like a, a tree level or by materials on the import? Uh, and then various geometry settings here. One that I like to turn on generally is create LODs. And you can change it if it's root or leaves, which uh, again is probably too deep in the weeds for us to get into, but there are two different ways of handling LODs. And then LOD quality, so you can change the defaults here. Lastly, you have um, some UV options down here under rendering, as well as if you wanna override the shader. And then for post-processing, we have no rules set up and we're just gonna do a regular import. So let me hit import and it's gonna pull this through. As a reminder, this is a BREP CAD step file. There is no geometry in the step. Um, so as this pulls this in and it looks like perhaps the scale is off slightly, so I would wanna go in here and just double check that the LOD appears to be working. As I zoom out, you can see pieces disappearing, reappearing, and getting higher in fidelity. If you click on the import as well, you can see all the LODs over here. All of this is editable after the fact. So awesome, we have our CAD data in. So let's say what I wanna do next is show how to pull in a point cloud. Uh, if I go back into Pixies, back into import model, grab the good old bunny example. Uh, you can see again that there's uh, a lot of options in here, but much less so than we just had uh, in the option of pulling CAD data. So uh, a few of these things you have, do you want to import the metadata, uh, different geometry options, segmentation. So the number of voxels in one dimension to use for the segmentation, higher value means more objects, which can help in increasing performance. So do you want this to segment out or not? Do you want LODs? We're gonna say yes. Uh, maybe we'll pull it down a little bit to three. I uh, don't really care about materials right now and don't really want to use any rule sets in post-processing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. And I see that the rotation is slightly off. So let me come in here and rotate this this way by 90, looks good to me. Cool. 
and everything has come through with three levels of LOD, which is great. However, you're probably looking at this and saying, but wait a second, this is all still a point cloud, which, yeah, that's great that Unity can see a point cloud, but it's not really going to give me the mesh. It's not going to give me the colliders that I need. So that's where we go back in and with this selected, go to Pixies. And just to review the options that you have here, you have import model, create import settings, create Pixies model, reset default and import settings, the toolbox, the rule engine, LOD systems. So if you want to do generation rules, processes, extract prefab assets, open documentation, again, the license manager, compatibility support about and check updates. So those are all your options. What I want to do right now though, is go into toolbox and then I want to go into remeshing and I want to retopologize. So we have include children, which is going to include everything under what I have selected. We're going to leave the type of remeshing to standard quality re preset. Maybe I'll go to low. Uh, we'll leave everything here how it is. And I'm going to say that this is a point cloud so that it knows how to process this appropriately. All right. So now we can hit execute and it's going to run and ideally it's going to spit us out a retopologized bunny. So let me turn off the point cloud that was the source origin. This is what we have. Remember, I turned on a low quality preset. Looks pretty damn good to me. I think that that covers the import and remeshing. If you wanted to come in here and do colliders, I could then create colliders based on this. So I'm going to execute that. It will now have created a collider for this. Um, that I can now use with this as geometry, or I can use it uh, with this as uh, point cloud data. So even if you kept everything as point cloud data, you still now have a collider that you could use with it. Uh, so that's kind of neat. If you're trying to move around a warehouse, keep the point cloud data, we can dig into in the toolbox, but for the sake of time and trying to keep this to our uh, signature 10 minutes, um, I will jump straight into the next piece of this, which for me and what I use all the time is the rule engine. So let me come over into the rule engine and hit create new rule set. Now, the cool thing is you don't have to have imported uh, a direct CAD data to use these rule engines or the rule sets. So one of the rules in here that you can apply is move pivot, which is notoriously something that's less than immediately uh, obvious and how to do in something like Unity where Pixies allows you to just have that happen instead of trying to nest things within parent game objects to try to move pivots. Uh, it's just a rule that you can set in here. So I'm going to say engine as the rule set that I want to use. And now to start it, I'm going to hit plus new rule, get game object. I'm going to drag in my radial engine STP. And now that that's selected, I'm going to say include whole hierarchy. And let's say I want to, let's pick something very simple. Let's say mesh decimate. And now the interesting thing is you can see in here that it has all the same settings as Pixie Studio. There are differences in Studio and then plugin, uh, but for all intents and purposes, there's a ton that, that aligns and is one for one. So looking at this, we have mesh decimate quality, medium, Surfacic tolerance, Linnaic tolerance, normal tolerance, and UV tolerance. If I come over into Pixie Studio and I do a optimize mesh decimate to quality, you're going to see that I now have preset low, surfacic tolerance, Linnaic tolerance, normal tolerance, and then we don't have anything down here and we've unchecked it as a Boolean. So you can see that they match up almost one for one. So I'm going to leave this all where it's at. The main reason that you end up using Studio uh, often is because it's just difficult to make a small change here and then see what happens in Unity and then Control Z and make a small change again and see what happens. In Studio, it's a lot faster to iterate just because you have all the 3D viewers. Um, you have the full history hierarchy that you can jump in between, etc. But this is a fantastic tool uh, if you don't want to jump out of Unity into a separate piece of software. So let's just say that that's good enough. I'm going to turn off my bunny, the collider, 
and the geometry, we're going to leave the radial engine on and we're looking at 420k tries, um, which is pretty steep. Now I want to come back into my rule engine. I'm going to turn this to poor, uh, which is even worse than low, and hit run. And let's see what happens to this number that's 420k tries. So we've now gone down to 377.8k tries. That to me is still not good enough, so I would want to keep dialing in these numbers. Um, so you can see, especially in Pixie Studio, um, what each of these do, but I believe if you hover over inside of Unity with the plugin, it gives you an idea of what each of these are. So you can also see, as I dial up, which direction the numbers are going in. So if I know that poor is 0 0.01, maybe I want that to be one now. So anyways, I would keep tweaking this and get it honed in on exactly what I want if I needed to stay within Pixie's uh, plugin. The idea here, though, is that you're, you're creating rule sets that you can reuse. So if you want to keep pulling in uh, assets similar to this engine, you can create the sequence of events that you want. Uh, it has remeshing in here. We went through all of this a little while ago, but the idea of um, you can add, do colliders, debugging, filtering, select children, compress your hierarchy, combine, explode, and merge, decimate, repair mesh, uh, change out materials, normals, pivot points, all this good stuff, and look into UVs. So if you need to create UVs in Unity, you can do that inside the plugin. So I have this created. And now the cool thing is if I go into Pixie's import model and I select this good old radial engine, down here where it says none for the rule set, I can now say engine. And now I'm not doing anything to it after I import it. It's going to automatically run that uh, rule set. And that's kind of the rinse and repeat that you would do inside a plugin. So there's a lot more that we can dive into. I want to keep this short and sweet. That's the idea of Pixie's plugin. It's all inside of Unity. It's a very quick one-stop shop to import CAD and point cloud data, optimize, uh, move pivots, create UVs as we've looked at all this good stuff in here. So I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions, if you want me to go deeper into any of this stuff, let me know. Uh, I had a request from another video to go into UVing using Pixie Studio. So that'll be coming up in the next video. Keep a lookout. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you on the next one.